Section number six, installing the stone. If your project contains corners, always start with those pieces first. Since corners generally have a long and a short side, alternate them to avoid vertical seams. As a general rule, it is best to start at the top and work your way down since it avoids grout dripping on lower stones. However, if your project uses a horizontal pattern of stone, such as a dry stack pattern, ledge stones, or quick fit, it may be beneficial to start from the bottom and work up. Try to keep your stone as clean as possible. If mortar should get splashed on the stone face, allow it to dry to a texture that can be brushed off with a dry brush. However, do not wait until the next day. When applying mortar in a hot or dry climate, special consideration should be taken to prevent excessive absorption of water from the mortar mix. A fine spray of water applied to the back of each stone as well as the masonry backing should be applied prior to the mortar mix. The backing should appear damp, but not wet. Now apply a half inch to three quarter inch thick mortar directly to the back of each stone unit and press into place over the clean masonry surface. Make sure to obtain complete coverage to the back of each stone. Light tapping or firm setting of the stone veneer will ensure a proper bond and allow excess mortar to migrate naturally into the grout joint. This will ensure a real strong bond. Be careful to keep the joint spacing even throughout your installation, approximately a half inch wide depending on the type of stone you're installing. Long, straight, or unbroken joints should be avoided. Vertical and horizontal joints should be staggered. Constantly check to make sure that the stones are level and plumb. You can trim the stones to fit better by using a hatchet, handheld grinder, or other suitable tool. Don't forget to wear your protective eyewear and dust mask and make sure to rinse the freshly cut stone to remove any dust before installing to the surface. 